This is Chris Howard on the first carry of the ball game for the Michigan Wolverines. You're going to see a lot of it today. That's a gain of five yards. The starting lineup for the Wolverines along the offensive front. Two redshirt freshmen, Jeff Backus and Steve Hutchinson. Chris Zeman's a sophomore. Adamy and uh, Jensen changed positions, but they've melded very well. The receivers, the tight end Jeremy Tooman is the leading the team in receptions as far as the ends are concerned. Wide out Ty Street finally has healthy hands. And the big number in the backfield is Chris Howard. 868 yards on the ground. This is Brian Casey rolling and throwing to his tight end. And it's good for the first down as Mark Campbell comes across to make the reception. He ran right along the yard the stripe with his quarterback, and suddenly he was open, and he gave him the ball. The Washington State defense along the front, big people here, two 300-pounders in Gary Holmes and Leon Bender. Dorian Boos and Shane Doyle are quick people and quite lanky. They can reach in the air. Got to throw it over them. The linebackers, this is a very quick group. And they will come. They're not as big as some, but they're quick. And uh, this is the defensive secondary. Lamont Thompson is a true freshman with five interceptions in his last three games. This is Chris Howard with his second carry of the ball game, and it's good Brandon for about two yards. To the Cougars. A gain of one yard. No score. We're second in the first nine. quarter of play. Let me give you that. Uh, the vernacular of the rule book and it says simply each player must wear a helmet a face mask a readily visible colored mouthpiece and half inch thick knee pads covered by pants well, i think he had his pants rolled up too rolled his pants his up above his knees you yes. gotta have your pants down below your knee these are sec officials maybe they don't allow that down there and the pac-10 does i doubt it and slipping and sliding and falling losing his footing is chris floyd he primarily is a blocking back, Brandon but occasionally Moore. he'll pop a big one on you, and he's a big guy at 231 pounds. But he's going to lose a couple of yards there, and it's going to be third down and 10. Well, we mentioned that uh, Michigan's offense is not like the Cougars. The Cougars score quickly. Michigan would rather take their time. 17 scoring drives of over 70 yards. And of those 17 drives, 15 were for touchdowns, so they got it in when they got down there. All right, Brian Greasy goes to the shotgun. Howard is in motion. He led the team in receptions this year. They flush Greasy out of the pocket. Pressure coming, passes away, and it is thrown out of bounds. Cougar caught it over there. They're going to give him the interception. Lamont Thompson, who's a six foot five inch true freshman, loping along. And when Steve Gleason hit Brian Greasy, he forced more air under the ball, and Thompson just barely got it. Well, it was good coverage initially, forces Brian to get outside the pocket. I just tried to throw this ball away, I think mostly. And Thompson from the top, this is his sixth interception in the last three games. He's a true freshman. Does a nice job of getting his feet in. Yeah, he had three against Washington. Three in his last game and yeah. two in the previous game. He just started. This is his fourth game that he has started, Thompson. Cougars come out now with a first down at their own 37-yard line. You've got four wideouts. Send the black up the middle to the 40. That'll be a pickup of about two, two and a half yards. James Hall with the stops for the Wolverines. Gain of three yards. That interception Second by Brian seven. Greasy was uh, only 40. his second interception in the last 120 throws. Michigan very good at not turning the ball over. Second down and long seven. Shotgun, nobody back there with him. There are five wideouts on the field. Pressure's coming, pass away, pass dropped. Pass dropped by Sean McWashington. I'd have heard some thundering hooves. And they belong to a fellow named Woodson. And Washington usually makes those types of catches. Keep on the quarterback. Mike Price says, all right, fellas, we're going to throw the ball a lot. We don't have to catch them all. We just want to catch some and break some big plays. So he's got some daylight. Yeah, I think he's still got some butterflies. You know, it, it takes a couple of series. Everybody goes settle down and play good football. Third down, long seven. Pass. Oh. 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 
You may have a roughing the passer call here because that's the second time uh, they've decked Leith, and it was Ian Gold who came flying in to hit him. I think you're right, Keith. Roughing the passer, personal foul, first down. And Michigan had a blitz on. And I think it was Ian Gold that had a clear shot. You see Carr shaking his head. A close call, but uh, nonetheless, a call that goes against Carr and Michigan and gives the Cougars a first down. That's like a turnover, Keith, because they would have had to punt the ball away. And they have the ball for the first time today on the Michigan side of the field at the Wolverines 45 yard line. 9-23. Like the single back. Like gets it. Nothing. <laughs> Winfield, number 81, James Hall, number 56. No game in the play. Second and ten. Football is all not only a game of acquisition of real estate, it is also a game of attrition. As uh, the teams with a greater depth will eventuate to the winner circle. It is reasoned, but not necessarily always true. But in the fourth quarter, it's going to be there's going to be some gut check time, I suspect, in this game. Leaf has good protection, throws, it's caught. Down at the fourth yeah, about a five-yard pickup by Sean Timms. Nothing was available deeper than that. That was the one man that was on. Mike Price calls all the plays. For the Cougars, he's got his chart right there, and he's just going to send them in with one of the other quarterbacks. McKenzie coming back. You see both the quarterbacks there doing signals, 17 and 13. They're both sending him one is hot and one is a dummy caller. And Love Jefferson, the tight end, goes out. That puts four wide receivers on the field. Out of the shotgun. The blitz. Going hard down the middle and by Tim. The ball was thrown very hard and a little bit behind him. They had the play. They had the yardage for the first down. I think I think all the receivers that, that haven't gotten hit yet, Tim's and McWashington, I think they still need to, to get the, the butterflies knocked out of them, Keith. The two guys that dropped balls hadn't gotten hit yet. Oh, it'll come. It'll come. Second punt for Jeff Banks. The first one was a 46-yarder. Woodson uh, standing outside the 10. Figures if he goes inside the 10, he's going to let it go anyway. And Banks trying to shoot it straight up and kill it deep. And he's got a man down there that may do it. Get it quick. He got it on the one. Chris Jackson. Can't let that thing bounce around twice. Uh, it'll slip right by you, but he got it. So it's a 39-yard punt, and it's just exactly what the Cougars wanted. Michigan will start at their one. If you need cash, you do have a lot of... Well, offensively, you don't want to make a mistake down here, Keith. Uh, you know, Michigan against Ohio State, the last game of the year, dropped one. Michigan not throwing many interceptions this year, and that's been one of the reasons they've been so successful. Ball is handed to Chris Howard. And Chris will get up to about the nine-yard line. Behind Steve Hutchinson, who is one of those red shirt freshmen on the left side of the line. Normally, when you have a right handed quarterback, you want experienced tough guys over there on that left side to take care of him. In Michigan's case, they have two red shirt freshmen on the left side of that offensive line, but they've been very good. Third down, all handed to Howard, and he is dropped. Right at the 10, Steve Gleason flying through, makes his second big defensive play of the ball game, and it's going to be fourth down. Washington State came with a blitz that time. Gleason, a linebacker, and more. Michigan's going to have to punt. 
So this is going to send Sean Timms deep, and the punter is Jason Benson. You can see he's standing well back in his end zone. And he gets it out. It's a good kick. Timms coming up for it. Gets called, puts it down at the Michigan 47-yard line. So, once again, Washington State's going to have the football on the Michigan side of the field. There's no score. 37 yards on the punt. How fast do I really have? Flew its first televised bowl game in 1962 down in Miami. Not the Eagle, mind you. It was another disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> the idea. Field position is so very important, and Washington State has had the best of it. Michigan with the one interception. Washington State has made a couple of first downs, and Michigan has only made one. There are the numbers on Ryan Lee. First down from the 47-yard line of Michigan. He stands and throws quickly, has a man over there. That's Chris Jackson. Jackson wiggles around and picks up the first down for the Michigan 35. Andre Weathers on the coverage. Chris Jackson Andre has Weathers evolved from this tackle. Fab Five receiver core to be the go-to guy. He leads him in receptions coming in with 49 and 11 touchdowns on the year. He was the basketball player in high school. Didn't play football. The only man on that 5-5 that did not play football in high school. You're right. So, first down. Second off. Michigan shows blitz are coming. They got it. Number 55, Deontay Jones. Jones, a young man from Potomac, Maryland. Sophomores. So quick. He stepped up into the gap, and he was gone before they had a look well, at him. There he is, 55, right at the middle. Ryan saw it coming, checked it off, but before Black could get up and block him, Jahani Jones was in there. If, if, now, Black needs to move up, Keith. If Jahani yeah, Jones gets deep. up in the line, he needs to scoot up right yeah. behind the guard to block him. Yeah, he was too far from him. Yeah, move up. It is now second down and 16 for the Cougars as they lose six on the play give it a black black pops it up the middle breaks one tackle breaks another tackle keeps on chunking down to about the 32 yard line where again jones makes the play black gained over a thousand yards this year keith uh, he uh he balances this attack out real nice mike price scripts the first 10 or 15 plays from the 32. He broke a tackle from Marcus Ray, and when you break a Marcus Ray tackle, uh, more than likely it's new. Good point. He's a tough guy. Third down now, and seven. Takes off. Gets his first down. See, he is not immobile. He got away from Joaquin Frizzell and took off. Ryan Leaf stands 6'6", weighs 238 pounds. And he's from Great Falls, Montana, so he's used to running barefoot in the snow. <laughs> this is the wild card in Ryan Leaf's ability to throw and run. He moves well, almost lost the ball, but picked up the first down. Good play. Down near the Michigan 28-yard line, where it's first down for the Cougars. No score in the first quarter with four men to play. Into the way to play. Black's got some room. Gets inside the 15, a little bit short of the first down. Tommy Hendricks and Marcus Ray on the tackle. Michael Black came out of Camp Kilpatrick, out in the Malibu Mountain area. Found his way after a bit of a troubled beginning in his young life to Pullman. Mike Price gave him a chance, and he's made the most of it. Second down and about a yard and a half. Leafs pass, touchdown, McKenzie. point 
David Muir, the quarterback. Ryan Lindell, the extra point kick. He's good. And 3.17 to go in the first quarter. Washington State goes to the lead. 7 to nothing. One second less than two minutes. Back deep. But at this point, you have to be a little bit careful now about fault security. Anthony Thomas, number 32, is out there looking at the ball, going deep into the end zone and beyond the field of play, and he'll come out to the 20. Keith, let's go back and take a look at the Michigan touchdown. Two wide receivers on either side of the field spreads out the Michigan defense. McKenzie's just going to run a slant from the slot position across the field. Ryan looks to his left. Now watch him as he's going to throw across the field. Take a look. Watch him backpedal. This is something a lot of quarterbacks don't do. He looks to our right side and comes back. This was probably a second or third receiver in the route. And Ryan isn't going to hide any emotion. So we got one. We got one. <laughs> Michigan has trailed in the first quarter in five of their games this year. Woodson on the field on the offensive side now. High Streets, however, will make that catch, number 86, the junior out of Madison, Illinois. At one time during the season, Ty Streets had a broken bone in one hand and a sprained thumb and something. Dislocated, Dislocated finger. Dislocated finger. Yeah. Again, <laughs> The good Second thing about bowl games, Keith, is mo both, both teams get an opportunity to, to heal most of their players, obviously, if you had a serious knee injury. But their little bang, bumps and bruises are all healed by now. All is handed off by Greasy. And the play by Chris Howard will go out to the 30-yard line, and that looks like it'll be a first down. The 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 Coming up on ABC Sports. Our bowl bash continuing with the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Bobby Bowden of the Florida State Seminoles against John Cooper's Ohio State Buckeyes. This one's got a chance to be a heck of a football game. That should game. be a good one, shouldn't it? Oh, boy. Two strong teams, boy. That's, that'll be a good one. So from the 30, first down for the Wolverines. That's Shaw going in motion. Greasy back swings it out to Chris Howard. He's caught in the backfield by Boos. Dorian Boos who, when he came to Washington State, had played wide out, had been a running back, had been a punter, and a basketball player, and then he started to get good food, and he grew, and he grew into a tackle. And his best football is ahead of him. Bill Doba, the defensive coordinator, saying, says he, his football is, a, he's only played defensive end for two years, Keith, as you mentioned. He's been everywhere else, growing into his body, and uh, he'll be a good player. Second down and 13. Greasy back again, setting up a screen. Ball goes to Chris Howard. Look out. That's a first down. It's a good, strong run by Howard. Dwayne Stewart finally got him down. Here's 20. Well, Keith, you and Bob were talking about the importance of Michael Black and Washington State's offense and how he balances that, that passing attack out. What Michigan seems to have lacked this year is a passing game that balances out their run attack. Their wide receivers accounted for 59 of the 191 pass receptions. That's only 30.8. And if you take out Charles Woodson, they only account for 25%. What they need for the receivers to do in this ball game, make a big play. They had zero catches against Ohio State, Keith. And Woodson has come off the field, and the ball is turned and given to Thomas. And Anthony Thomas, the freshman out of Wendell, Louisiana, he's a big guy, about 228 or 30 pounds. And he can pop in there with some authority. Got better and better as the year went on. The ball is put at the 45-yard line. Dorian Boos again on the tackle. You hear the crowd, it may sound like they're booing, but they're just cheering Boos. Boos. You do that well, Hoss. Mm, well, he, <laughs> he showed me how yesterday. Yeah, uh -huh. Very attractive yesterday. He is. I thought the best yell of the banquet, the, the luncheon yesterday, was Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, she does that Tarzan still pretty good. <laughs> Second down and eight. She back, drops it off right here again to that tailback, and again they miss a tackle, miss two tackles, and uh, Thomas is all the way down to the 40-yard line on the Washington State side of the field. So they now, Michigan is spreading the Cougars a bit. Yeah, well, Brian was looking to throw the ball downfield, but both receivers were pretty fair, fairly well covered, well, so he Thompson dumped it off to the back. Thomas, 32, is going to swing to the left side. 
Brian gives it a good look downfield and then just dumps it off. And Thomas does a good job of getting away from the tackle of Gleason. Gary Holmes came in and put a pretty good lick on uh, Brian Greasy too after the ball as the ball was being thrown. Ball is handed to Thomas. And uh, Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator for the Wolverines, apparently has decided now that it's time to go out there and start doing some paint swapping. So well, they put the big back yeah. in. Well, yeah, that's right. But this is a big drive for Michigan, Keith. They've had the ball. Uh, this is their third possession. And, and, and Washington State has just went down and scored, so it's important for Michigan to get down and answer that. Second and eight. We're coming up toward the end of the quarter, and uh, that will there will be no more play as we run out of time. Clarence Williams is on the field and apparently will play in when we come back from this break. Seven nothing, Washington State lead. This first play, after having struggled some with a hamstring, he's a very good receiver, and he picks up uh, Nelson with the tackle. Eh, maybe a yard, maybe two. Here's the numbers after the first uh, first quarter. Look down to, to turnovers. The numbers are pretty equal down to turnovers. Michigan had the one turnover, led to seven points uh, by the Cougars. Yards. Time of possession about the same, and the average starting position is big in favor of the Cougars. 37. Jerry Matuman, uh, the tight end, uh, their leading receiver, and catching the ball. Cougars showing blitz. They bring uh, Tuman back toward the ball. Brian Greasy dropping the throw, gets his pass away, and it's deflected. It was deflected and incomplete. Well, Brian felt like he had a receiver open if he just hadn't gotten the ball deflected. One of the uh, Cougar defensive linemen. I think it's going to be Holmes. Nope. Stewart gets it. Lamont Gibbons defending on the play for the Cougars. And it falls to the field. And it is fourth down for the Wolverines. The ball is resting at, their, at the Washington State 38-yard line. And they'll punt. Both teams, Keith, have uh, fake punts, fake field goals, and all these tricks in. Punter just came on the field. Wonder everybody else went out and got in set position and then the punter came running out. A lot of tricks you got to, to prepare. High hanger, that'll be pretty good. They're gonna let it go and it takes a further bounce. Comes bounding back up the field. So there's a bit of luck in the bounce of the ball there for Washington State as it comes out to the 23 yard line where they will get it after a 15 yard net on that punt. In Swan, what do you say? Well, Keith, it usually takes about a quarter for both teams to establish a pace of the ball game or, or get used to the speed of the play. Now, Ryan Leaf is one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and there's nobody at Michigan who could throw the ball in practice with the kind of velocity he does. So they're going to take a little time just to feel him out and time the ball a little bit better. But keep in mind, this Michigan defense is also extremely quick. He's got to adjust to the speed of their defensive secondary and how fast they, too, break on the ball, Keith. Bob? A little game of dominoes. Uh, especially when you don't have any backs in the backfield. Ryan knows that uh, they're going to be coming after him, and he knows he's going to throw it quickly. Second and ten. Woodson coming around the corner. Passes away, and it is caught. Marvelous catch by Sean Mack Washington. Tommy Hendricks just clobbered him, and Mac Washington came up with it. That makes up for any balls that were dropped right there. Ball is uh, thrown only place it can be. Leaf gives himself a little bit of time, buys himself some time by sliding around in the pocket. Moves around, throws it off balance. He that ball, the strong arm to get that one in, Keith. Ball handed off. And not a lot in there for Dewan Gilmore, who's in it running back now, giving Michael Black a bit of a breather. And Black needs it because most of his work here in this early going has been blocking those big people. The reason that last completion by Ryan Leaf was made is because of his mobility to move around and give McWashington a little bit more time to get open. And the strong arm that got it upfield. Gilmore over the yard on the carry. It is second down and nine. You've got three wide receivers at the bottom of your picture. Throws it out here. Ball is caught by McKenzie. And 
and a good solid open field tackle by Marcus Ray. He just nailed him to the turf. He had two people, two of the wideouts were in front of him trying to get effect blocks, but Ray penetrated. Well, Ryan saw that there was going to be a zone out there. Only two of the two defensive backs out there covering his three wide receivers that you mentioned, Keith. So he just flipped it out there and let him run with it. That was the Mac Washington uh, Hendricks collision from uh, the play before we just saw. Third down and four. He's got it. First down. He's got loose. It's Chris Jackson, and out of bounds at the 15-yard line. 14-yard line. Got away from Tommy Hendricks, and Tommy ran him down. Four wide receivers spread across the field, and here you have one-on-one -on -one outside here. Receiver just going to go down five yards and stop. It's third and five. Picks it up and then a poor tackle by Weathers. Big first down, short throw, long run. Do something with it after you catch it. There you go. First down at the 14. Show blitz, they're coming. Passes away, he's open, he missed him. Sean Mack Washington was alone in the end zone and the ball was just a little too high because there were three people beating on Ryan Leaf. Yeah, you're exactly right, Keith. Ryan held it as long as he could. From behind the defense, there's a blitz, Gold and Dehani Jones up the middle. And he saw him coming across and he just couldn't wait long enough. He had to throw it. He didn't know exactly the angle of him coming across the field. Close. Second down and ten. Gilmore. Not a lot there. A couple of yards. It'll be third down. This offense of Washington State, Keith, passes to set up the run. Mike Price loved to spread them out. When you spread the receivers across the field, you also spread the defense across the field. You spread them thin. It's almost like when he runs the ball, it's like an afterthought. You, you're kind of surprised when he runs it. Leaf has now crossed the 100-yard marker at 101. The ball is on the 12-yard line. Third down and eight. Here they come again. Charles Woodson. So he goes to Woodson's side of the field and he takes it away from him. John invites me to help him test the new road game. Okay. I have see now what impact that play will have on the rest of this game. Ball is handed inside to Chris Floyd, the, the big fullback, and he's decked right at the line of scrimmage. Here's the matchup. Here's the matchup right here. What's in number two, the bottom of your frame? I said early in the ball game that if you're not on time when you've got Charles Woodson, if you're trying to beat Woodson, and you don't throw the ball accurately or on time or with a good spiral. The ball may have gotten there a little quicker if he had a good spiral on it, but there is no room for not being perfect when you throw in the area of Charles Woodson. Kruger show blitz. And Brian Greasy runs away from it. And we'll get up to about the 27-yard line where Marin Pulla brings him down. <laughs> Looks like Brian is looking to his left side. He looks to his tight end. They have double coverage on the tight end. Michigan likes to throw to their tight ends. They like to throw to their backs. They like single coverage outside on the wide receivers. Brandon Moore, number 22, was the man that flushed him for Washington State. Third down now and three. 
the pass he is batted down that's the second time today a lineman has affected the flight of the ball that time Dorian Boos just swatted it away Boos is uh, 282 pounds he stands 6'6 six, six. number 90 doing a nice job Boos fighting to get in and if you can't get near the quarterback get your hands up when you see he's going to throw the football so on fourth down Jason Benson is in the punt it's one that has a low trajectory. Sean Tins yeah, trying yes. to find some room. Good to the punt and Washington eight, State, eight, once again, is going to have very good field position. First down at their own 40. How long does it take to turn the new Dodge Durango from... Almost a day. It's getting a little hazy now. But there had been forecasts of rain late in the day, but I think not. Ryan Leaf now coming out for this possession to start at his own 40-yard line. Washington right, State's average starting position has been very good so far in the game. Outstanding. They lead 7 to nothing with 9.43 to play in the first half. Michigan shows blitz. They run it up the middle with Gilmore. And Gilmore sidesteps one tackle. And then he is brought down up at the 46-yard line by Andre Weathers. He's been blocking on the left side of that offensive line, Rainville and McAndoo and Harrison, the center. Yes, Gilmore's yes. going off the field now, and so is Love Jefferson. That probably is going to bring us to a no-back circumstance on second down and four. Michael Black has been off getting some rest, so you've got your five wideouts. And Michigan tops up there, and here they come. Every time they see this, they're going to lay their ears back and come. Passes away, the pass is caught. Good for a first down. The man made the catch on his knees, and now they're going to wave it off and say no catch. Didn't control it. It's Nyan Taylor. The reason the ball was low is because Ryan threw it so quickly before he set his feet because he knew there was a blitz coming. When there is not any running backs left in the backfield, as you see here, he's going to get out and throw the ball quickly because he knows he can't block anybody. That was a catchable ball. Oh, it certainly was catchable, but it went right through his, uh, and through his arms. Yep. So it'll be third down and four now for Washington State. All the way on four to six yard line. As Fab Five has not been fabulous. They've dropped three passes That's so right. far, Keith. Right. Well, one of them was thrown too hard, I think. He <laughs> broke his hand. They got him. James Hall, number 56. <laughs> Messing, messing with the uh, Leafs line. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, goes to a three-man defensive line this time and puts his four guys from the weak side. Ryan didn't see it coming. You don't want to block Steele. I mean, somebody's got to get on that big guy. Oh, got him, but it's a good thing that Steele didn't get there first. And on fourth and 13, in the punt is Jeff Banks. Gets it out. Gets it to turnover. Pretty good kick. Woodson at the 19. First man missed him. Second man missed him. Gets a block on the corner. He may tear this one up. And they finally get him out of bounds. So they got themselves. There were four of them. They got them all locked into one spot. And nobody could make the tackle. 44-yard punt and a 15-yard return. Tonight's topic, free Friday. Yeah. Sir, you played a critical role in the creation of the new Burger King fries that are being given away this Friday? Th that's right, Bill. Free Friday. Amazing. Now this. The crispy new Burger King fries beat McDonald's fries in a nationwide taste test. He's going to outrun the entire Cougar defense to the sideline, but by doing so, the rest of them catch up. But uh, this is the best field position for the Wolverines all day. He's still got it after the play action and going deep downfield. He's caught, tripped him up, and a penalty flag. Ty Streets trips, running across with Ray Jackson covering, and it's a 15-yard pass interference call coming up. Hey, 
pass interference against the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, and an automatic first down. Not catchable is what Mike Price is saying. I like the call, though, Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator, going deep to kind of loosen up the Cougar defense. I think that's a good call. Ray Jackson is the brother of Chris Jackson, the wide receiver on the Washington State team. Ball comes with the penalty out to the 49-yard line and a first down. Woodson is on the field, and he's the man in motion, and he has the ball, and he's coming around, and he is caught behind the line of scrimmage by Brandon Moore. Moore blitzing on the play, one of those linebackers that's very quick, and he ran him down. Loss of the two yards. As I mentioned, they, both teams have had five or six weeks to prepare for this game, Keith, and both teams have a few new wrinkles, and that was one that Michigan has not shown most of the season. Woodson was lined up at the left flanker, came back in motion, and Brandon Moore says, I'll have none of that stuff. Ball comes back to the 46-yard line, and Brian Greasy drops. Gets his pass in the air for Ty Streets, and he's got it, and he's gone. Touchdown, Michigan. Ty Streets is 6'4", Ray Jackson 6'1", and Streets just simply outran him. And Brian put the ball right where it had to be. The coordinator says we're going to test the corners. We're going to throw deep to our wide guys. They're both healthy for the first time in a long time. Twice on that series, they threw the ball deep down the field. They got a penalty and a touchdown on the two plays. Craig Baker for the point. And it's good. Penalty flag, though. Two penalty flags in the end zone. Penalty flags. They're both thrown in from the end zone. I just, it makes me think that it's too many men on the field for the Cougars. Yeah, there's the guys that. We have too many players yeah. on the field. Illegal see, participation. Yeah. Those they guys, guys back there are the ones that do the count. The they count them, don't they? Yeah. The point is yeah. good. And they both, they both must have counted because they both of them <laughs> threw their flags. Kick was good to tie the score at seven. The tie streets, number 86. Single coverage. He's got the speed and the height. And the ball was right there. Touchdown, Michigan. And you've got 7.08 to play in the first half. Washington State scored early in the ball game and led up to this point and uh, could have had a chance to put another one away except a pass went to the hands of uh, Woodson and uh, the Cougars didn't score. That's a, that's a big score for Michigan. Now now both teams have scored. They've both drawn blood. Now they're going to play football. 20. In the play, we talked about the wide receivers from Michigan having to make in this ball game. It wasn't a tough catch over the middle. It was straight down the sideline, deep. He beats his man, and he turns in a big play to keep this offensive going, offensive unit going, and get on the scoreboard. If the wide receivers of Michigan can turn in this kind of play throughout the ball game, Michigan can conceivably blow this game wide open, Keith. All right, the kickoff is coming, and the deep people for Washington State are Taylor and McKenzie. 82 and 9. It's four yards deep and there'll be no return. So they'll come out to the 20 yard line where they'll have it first down. Sunday at 2 Eastern 1. Now let's see whether or not that Michigan defense will assert itself here, pin Washington State, and give their offense one more chance before the halftime. 7-7 seven, seven time. Leafs pass thrown to the outside. It is completed to McKenzie. And he loses the football. But there's a flag on the field. There's a beanbag on the field. That means he keeps possession. Well, one of the Michigan men was trying to get off the field. 
Timms. Sean Timms, the man who had the ball, not nine, eight. Here's the discussion of the penalty. Michigan with too many men on the field. Bottom of your screen right there. It's, um, Didn't make it. Yeah. That's one of the problems. Against the defense. Against the defense. Yeah. Player did not get off the field in time. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Keith, one of the one of the problems for Michigan playing against the team that used multiple formations. Three wide receivers, four wide receivers, no backs, five and all that, is you want your personnel groups to match up with their offensive groups yours defensively and Jim Herman has a lot of different packages and he usually names them or codes them so everybody knows which ones they're on that time too many players on the field so it's first and five after the penalty at six and a half minutes to go in the first half leads quickly to Jackson Chris is down incomplete forward pass Clint Copenhaver knocked it out of there uh, Keith, Michael Black hasn't been in the ball game. He's on the sideline. The reason is he bruised a muscle on his right leg, on the outside of that leg, just below the knee. He had a pad on it. Uh, he tried to w walk and keep it loose in the sideline. The padding felt uncomfortable. He took it off. But as you can see, he's just standing there and with, doesn't have his helmet. And whenever a player doesn't have his helmet, Keith, it's a sure bet he's not going in the ball game anytime soon. Right. That's a huge loss for him. No backs. Second down. Here comes Gold on the blitz and pick him up. Throw the ball. His pass is completed to Chris Jackson. He rolls over the 30-yard line, and that'll be a first down. by James Whitley. I think when Ryan sees something strange over there, he's just going to pop up and fire that ball out here. Yeah, three wide receivers out here just get the ball out it's like a it's like a long handoff Keith on a run around the end Kane's move first down Cougars six minutes to go first half seven seven time in the 84th play of the road book into the Gilmore and he'll have a yard they sorely miss Michael Black. No doubt about it. Well, Gilmore is, is a little bit more explosive, but certainly doesn't have the complete package of, of running, receiving, and blocking that Michael Black has. Ryan Leaf, 8 of 18 for 106 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Gilmore has the size enough, 195, but he's a sophomore. He not a whole lot of playing time. Second down. Leaf has protection this time, and it's near dropped. My goodness, it was in the hands of James Whitley, the freshman from Norfolk, Virginia, and James couldn't I think put the, it away. I think one of Whitley's uh, teammates knocked Nine it out of his hands. Receiver. There's a penalty flag back where the ball was thrown. James Whitley on the coverage. Yeah, I think he would have held on if Hendricks 41 hadn't have knocked it out. We've got a penalty against Washington State. Both of these teams have a lot of penalties. Keith called against them. In fact, uh, Michigan is the most penalized and the Cougars are right right near the most penalized. <laughs> Averaging 11 penalties per game. We have an offensive face mask penalty, which is automatically 15 yards. The penalty is from the spot of the foul. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat the down. Wow. That's severe. At number 13, you see wigwagging the signs in. That's Steve Birnbaum. He's out of Chino Hills, California, sophomore. Possibly the successor. Ryan Leaf at Washington State at the quarterback position. That's an 18 yard penalty. Leaf stands up, steps away, throws it to Grant. Sean Timms was out there and was about his only choice. Josh Williams was about to now deck it. I don't think Ryan knew what they were doing. I don't think Michigan knew what they were doing defensively. They were running back and forth. 
This Cougar offense averaging 42 points per game. Michigan only giving up an average of nine points a game from behind the offense. Josh Williams, 91. So it is third down and 27 for the Cougars. No backs. Lee takes off. Got a block. And he gets it up to the 26, 27 yard line where Ian Gold has the privilege of making a tackle, but he found out that this is a big, tough man. So he did get him down. Now they'll punt. Woodson backing up. Go back inside the 35. And Jeff Banks now for his fourth punt of the day 46 39 and 44. No pressure. Kick is away. Woodson at the 32. And again. <laughs> So they pin him in and drop him back at the 32-yard line, a 7-7 tie. Computers, they're like a tutor. Staff in a 7-7 tie. The nation's top defense against the nation's number two offense. Michigan trying to win its first undisputed national championship in a half a century. Washington State coming in with its highest ranking in the national polls ever. Brian Greasy on first down for the 32. Eight complete to Russell Shaw. His first reception of the day, and it's good for about 12 yards in the first down. If you're going to throw a first down, is not a bad down to throw. And uh, Mike DeBoer, the last possession that Michigan had, they went down and scored, opened it up, threw some deep passes. I think first throwing on first down is the key for Michigan, Keith. I think the Cougars are stacked in there for that run game. Inside four minutes to go in the first half now. They've got a double tight end alignment, Campbell and uh, Tubin. Tubin has not caught a ball yet today. That's Anthony Thomas, the freshman, and he is decked by Dorian Boos for a loss on the play at the 42. I don't think Anthony Thomas saw the big boost. <laughs> you don't really, you don't normally see many running backs get hit and taken down like this. Boost is number 90. Throws away Campbell, number 88, after he gets out of his grip. Good play by Boost. He's got containment on that side. Nobody was going to get outside of him. Put it on the 41 and make it a second down and 13. Boost has still got it. Passes away to Truman, his first catch of the day. And he's knocked out of bounds yeah, just across midfield. And it's about three yards short of a first down. If there's one play that Michigan is known for, I think, throwing the ball, Keith, it's that counter with the, with the uh, tight ends coming across. Uh, they've run this play all year long from behind the defense of Washington State. Newman's got a lot of these passes this year. It's just almost touching the midfield stripe. And it's third down and three. This is an area where the Cougars like to blitz. Here they come. And they got it. Brandon Moore came right up the middle. He's a senior from Carson, California. And nobody touches him. 15 yards. There's Moore right here. He's going to blitz right inside. Watches. It's just going to open up. Nobody lays a hand on him. Brian trying to get the ball to the tight end coming across, but didn't have time. And Vincent. Good kick. Fair catch call at the 26 yard line by Sean Tim. And that's where the Cougars will take over in a 7 7 tie and 229 to play in the first half. Well, they say the national title's on the line. Who ought to be number one? Across the way. Dropped by Chris Jackson. About four, five, five drops by the wide receivers. 
Michigan's tough on quarterbacks. This is what they've done all season long in their first 11 games. 49% completion rate. Only three touchdowns allowed. And they picked off 22 passes. Let's check and see what Ryan Leaf has done this year. He's completed 56, thrown 33 touchdown passes, and only 10 interceptions. Going for 331 yards. So that's what you got. You got big-time passer against big-time defense. Four wideouts, three of them at the top of the picture. Hand it off to Gilmore. That's a pretty good little run there by Gilmore. He gets it up to the 35-yard line, about two yards short of his first down. Mike Price, who calls the plays, uh, going to all of his tricks. The last uh, series, he had a quarterback draw with no backs in the backfield, and now he's trying to keep that defensive line and linebackers honest by running some draws in there. Two nights ago, Mike was really sick. He shook it off. I imagine he had a little adrenaline help. <laughs> Third down and a short two. Dropped it. Leaf dropped the snap. Didn't come away from Lee Harrison clean with it. Didn't be fourth down. That a drive coach is nuts right there. The drive coach is nuts. What usually happens is the center is so anxious to get out and get his block, and a lot of times he has to reach. No, he didn't even get it back. It slipped oh. out. Yep. It didn't even get up. What happens there is that a lot of times they'll tilt the ball too much, and it, the ball will he won't get it, won't slide along the grass. It's tilted too much, and it just, the point is in the grass. Never gets it snapped. Jeff Banks to punt again, and this is the fifth. Woodson's waiting. Good air under this one. Good kick. And Woodson calls the fair catch at the 25-yard line. Mark it right there, and it'll be first down for Michigan. 41 yard punt. 41 yards. Uh, Charles Woodson, we uh, talked about him before the game. Let's see what he's done so far today. A little pressure from the outside. Defense, the coverage. Got the only pick of the game. Helped turn the momentum around. He's been in about uh, three or four plays on offense and been a and very uh, active defensively. Woodson's in there now as a wideout, top of the picture, and Brian Gracie drops the throw, swings it out there, and it goes to Chris Howard. There's a penalty flag on the field as Howard runs for a first down. Let's see about that flag that came from the referee, and it may very well be holding on Michigan. That's usually bad news for the offense when he pulls the yellow out. That's what it is. Lloyd Carr had Woodson in there just to be a decoy more than anything else. Talking to Bill Doba, the defensive coordinator for the Cougars, he said, I asked him, I said, when Michigan puts in Woodson, what usually happens? He says, they usually try to get him the ball. So the ball comes back inside the 10 yard line for Michigan. Good run here inside by Clarence Williams. Well, he doesn't look like he's got a sore hamstring there as he wiggled his way through the traffic very well. Looked like the old turns. Yeah, he. Um... He missed the last three ball games, as you know. Put it on the 20. That's a run of better than 10 yards. From the point of the foul, that wound up being, what, about a 15-yard penalty, didn't it? He did a good yard. Now it'll be second down and 15 for the Wolverines. I don't think either team is anxious to, um, to uh, snap the ball or have it snapped, Keith. Well, you're coming down to 10 seconds to go in the half. I think they're both willing to go to the clubhouse with the way things they are right now. So you've got an even score at 7-7. You've got 30 minutes left to play, and they'll go talk about things. So the shadows start reaching across the old bowl, and we'll reach across the country to John Saunders. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Alongside Todd Blackledge, no question Charles Woodson deserved yeah. the Heisman Trophy. He's showing it again today, but some problems for Washington State. Yeah, I mean, they need both 
Ryan Leaf in the passing game, and Michael Black in the running game to attack this Michigan defense. His status in the second half will be critical. Okay, we'll be back later with scores and highlights. We'll get back to the Rose Bowl in a moment. After this. With a 7-7 ball game on our hands. And the Washington State University marching band on the field under the direction of Don Howard. Let's listen. Here. Let's get you up to date on all the other games played today. We started this afternoon on ABC with a Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, and Penn State had their chances in the first half. Yeah, fourth and one here. Chris Everly stopped. You can tell they really missed Curtis Enos this part of the field. A few series later, Mike McQuarrie tries to guide one in there. It's intercepted by Demetrius Lewis. Another scoring opportunity by the wayside for Penn State. Doug Johnson hurt his shoulder out of the game. Number three quarterback in, Jesse Palmer. Here goes 37 yards to Jock Wes Green. He had two touchdown catches on the day for the Gators. And then Steve Spurs says to Joe Paterno, you get to wear my lid here. You take this one home as a souvenir. Penn State with just 47 yards on the ground. Yeah, Florida did two things very well today. Run the football with Fred Taylor and play defense. Held Penn State to a season low 139 yards of total offense. In the Cotton Bowl, Texas A&M against UCLA. Cade McNown picked off by Dat Wynn. That's not enough. Wynn takes off and gives it to Brandon Jennings. Well, Dat Wynn had 20 tackles on the afternoon here. Very alertly pitches it back to Jennings, who takes it the rest of the way on an 86-yard interception lateral for a touchdown. This put A&M up 7 to nothing. Uh, but UCLA would come back. Ryan Newfield, five yards for the touchdown. They get the two-point conversion from Cade McNown and win this one 29-3. Cade McNown, 239 yards and two TDs. And Skip Hicks added 140 yards rushing, part of that two-headed offensive attack for UCLA. North Carolina blows away Virginia Tech in the Gator Bowl. UNC's defense, 19 points off three turnovers. Great defense and a, and a nice performance by Chris Keldorf, 290 yards passing and three scores for the Tar Heels. In the Outback Bowl, Georgia blows away Wisconsin, 33 to 6. Ron Dane, 14 carries, just 36 yards. Too much speed and too many weapons for the Georgia offense. All three had great games. Mike Bobo only missed two passes the entire afternoon. A reminder, tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, noon Pacific on ESPN, it's the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Clemson against number 13 Auburn. The national title on the line, well, who should be number one if both Michigan and Nebraska win? We get a chance to decide, as Keith pointed out, though it doesn't really count. Vote now on America Online. Keyword, ABC Sports. Ty Streets hauls this one in for the touchdown. The Wolverines come back from down 7-0. It's all tied up at halftime at 7 apiece. Now in the Arroyo Seco and the Rose Bowl in a 7-7 ball game between number one Michigan and number seven Washington State and the University of Michigan marching band now on the floor of the Rose Bowl. 235 musicians and performers making their 16th appearance today. Second half of play. Uh, it's not always so that uh, these big hyped uh, whoop de doo shootouts happen as advertised and, and planned. Uh, and uh, normally when you get into a ball game where the marbles are on the table, the defense steps up anyway, doesn't it? Well, we, we said that the game was going to be won in the trenches. And, yep. and so far, uh, the Michigan defensive line has been dominant. Mm -hmm. And the uh, uh, Washington State offense, the defensive line has stopped the Michigan from doing much. And they've been able to get fair pressure on leap they've knocked him down uh, four times put him on his back but he's had more pressure than that but it's the physicality of how many times he's hit that I, I think he's thrown the ball 22 times and he's been hit 11 of those 22 times and not flat four times exactly and sacked twice and they've been closed a bunch of other times right. I take you back to that Florida Florida State game of a year ago in the regular season when they put Danny Werfel on his back so many times it makes a difference here are the Heisman Trophy winners numbers on the day. He's had a pretty good half. Nothing in particular offensively, but the defensive play has been good. 
Washington State was down there and a bit of a bad pass by uh, Leith that uh, where the pressure forced him to throw the ball and Woodson was able to intercept it. Otherwise, it might be at least 10 points, maybe even 14. He just threw a little bit late, and you yep. can't do that with Woodson. That's right. 20? Well, Kate, Lloyd Carr feels that the defense has been playing well enough. They hurt a lot. Here's the kickoff. It goes to Michigan to start the second half. Bouncing on the ground is finally picked up. And Anthony Thomas, the tailback, will run it across the 20 and out to about the 24-yard line. Halftime numbers are these. To look at the numbers, uh, <clears throat> Washington State rushing for 50 yards. That's more than Michigan is rushing for, although Michigan is passing for more yardage than the Cougars are. Michigan 0 for 5 on third down conversions. Usually during the season, they were pretty good at that time of possession. The Cougars, everything's flip flop here, Keith. Uh, you know, yes, it's it not no, nothing makes sense. <laughs> the Cougars weren't supposed to possess it long. They've been uh, doing pretty good with it. So let's go with it from the 24-yard line. Brian Greasy, play action, rolls out and throws incomplete. Throwing for Jeremy Tooman, and he was pretty well covered. Michigan sets the tone. They come right out at halftime, throwing on first down, second half. Brian, 9 of 13, 116 yards, a touchdown, an interception. Just starting the third quarter of play, second down and ten. Chris Howard, big hole left side. Great job of blocking in front of him by Russell Shaw. D. Warren Cola finally took him out of bounds. Watch the left side of that line, uh, Hutchinson and Backus. Now Backus. watch Shaw right yeah. in front of him. Shaw's going to come into the picture pretty soon. I think, Keith, the most underrated back in the Big Ten is this man right here, Chris Howard. I agree. First down, 28-yard run at the Washington State 48-yard line. Anthony Thomas is in the backfield. Greasy throws. Right into the hands of Stewart. And he was startled and dropped it. Like he was expecting the wide receiver to run a slant and he went straight up the field. Michigan throwing on first downs in the second half here. Whoa. Can't tell there. Lucky to get that one back. That's a poor throw there. I don't know if he was hit when he was thrown or not, but that was, uh, they're lucky to get that back is right. Second down and 10. Handed off to Thomas. And Thomas is taken down by Gleason and company. Brandon Moore with the stop for Washington State. You haven't called Leon Bender's name very much, but he's he hasn't made any individual plays of particular note, but he sure is occupying a lot of people. Yeah, Leon Bender, the defensive tackle, uh, weighs 300 pounds. That's that's normal, Keith, for those defensive linemen inside. They just they just take up a lot of room, force two linemen to block them, and everybody else makes the plays. Third down. Here they come. Reverse. Here comes Woodson. One tackle miss. And finally, he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Leon Bender. And there's a penalty flag across the way. Penalty flag of the play. Oh, we were talking about Bender, and suddenly he shows up. Let's see about the penalty. Offside, Washington State. Yeah. So they knock him down for a big loss as they try to run a reverse. And I think <laughs> the would-be blitzer was in the neutral well, zone where the ball was just snapped. drives coaches nuts, Keith. Penalty is five yards. There he is. See, he's in the neutral down. zone right there. Yeah, yep. Gleason just he wanted to. You know, this... Mike DeBoard, the offensive coordinator, told me that they like to blitz the Cougars on third and medium, third and five or six yards, and they have continued to do that in this ball game. So that goes from uh, about third and uh, close to 20 to third and a short one. Big difference. Well, it was third and six to third and one. Well, but the loss on the previous play. Oh, yeah, you're right. Way back there near oh, mid, okay. past midfield. All right. There's the first down right there. 
So put it at the 37, and it's first down, Michigan. What a great year. The National Coach of the Year awards. You know what this means for him, though? If he wins this game and wins the national championship, it authenticates him forever. He gets out of the shadow He's of Bo Schembechler. Absolutely. Chris Howard. Chris Howard's a pretty good hammer. He stands in there at 216 pounds, comes out of River Ridge, Louisiana, and he's deceptively fast. Wayne Stewart made that tackle. Yeah, I like Howard, Keith. He's, uh, not only does he lead the team in rushing, but he also leads in receptions. Yeah, he had 35. Coming in. Charles Woodson up there at the top of the picture. As a wide out, they're looking at him. They're going to him. Ray Jackson defending, and it's incomplete. Thrown beyond the field of play. So it appears to be Ray Jackson, the man they want to pick on. Yeah, doesn't? yeah, and that's uh, that that corner position. Ray Jackson and um, and Gibbons. As you take a look at this, I think when Jackson sees Gib when Jackson sees uh, Woodson in there, he says, "I'm just getting deep." No, oh, blame him. But Streets uh, beat uh, Ray Jackson earlier. That is the guy they're going after. Third down. Third down and eight. From the 37. Here they come. Sideline dropped by Russell Shaw. Didn't exactly know where he was. And the ball slipped off his fingers. Wayne Jackson defending. It wouldn't have been enough for a first down, but uh, Wayne Stewart applying pressure to the quarterback. It looks like they're going to punt it away, Keith. 14. I thought maybe they'd go for it on fourth down Eight here. Who is it that put, uh, uh, you know, Mike DeBoer had been the offensive line coach. I bet he had a hand in the rebuilding of this line, considerable yeah, hand in it, along with Terry Malone. They've done a heck of a job rebuilding that line for Michigan. Kevin McKenzie is in the field now. Apparently his summer settling down. That's a high hanger, and they kill it. So they work it just the way they wanted it. Jeff Holtry, the man who snapped the ball to the punter, Vincent, goes down, waits for it, and puts it down on the one. And there the Cougars will have to go to work. Blimp Eagle out of Carson, California. Tom Mattis is at the controls out of Huntington Beach, California. And the cameraman, Glenn Hempton. Washington State now for the first time today. Very, very the poor ball. field position. The ball comes loose. And the Cougars keep it. Leap dove for it. But uh, one of them, either he or Harrison, uh, got a hold of it. Well, I tell you, it. that is not a spot where you want to have a center quarterback exchange problem on your own one-yard line. I don't know, that ball got up there. It looked like it just went through Ryan's hands. It's the second time that's happened. Actually fell forward for a two-yard yeah, gain. Got two yards. <laughs> Stopped a lot of hearts too. Leap out of the end zone. Let's it go. It's Mac Washington. He's got it. Out of the 22-yard line. He took punishment to do it from Tommy Hendricks, but he made the play. Take a look from behind the quarterback. It's a big play. Gets you out of the shadow of your own end zone. That's a nice uh, play by McWashington to concentrate to get his right foot down. He knew he was going to get hit. That's the second time they've gotten together with considerable force. Ammon uh, McWashington, I'm sure, must be here watching his son play. He's principal at Garfield High School in Seattle for a long time. Kevin McKenzie he is back on the field now for the Cougars, and they've got five wideouts. Throw it quickly to Timms. And Timms is hit quickly by Andre Weathers. Everything is quick, quick when they get into that alignment. They pick up about four yards on that play. Now, every time he gets in five wide receivers and no back in the backfield, he's throwing it one, two, and throwing. Nyan Taylor and McKenzie go off the field now. 
and it's second down, six, seven, seven tie between Washington State and Michigan, third quarter. And that's a disconnection between Leaf. Had to unload it because Glenn Steele was climbing all over him, and he tried to get it to Sean McWashington again, but Weathers was there this time. In fact, he hit Weathers in the back. That was just a misread, Keith. He thought that he was either going to run a quick out or a stop, and he kept going up the field. But this is what Carr was telling us that he wanted to force Ryan Leaf to do, and that is throw quickly. Well, the longer he's got the ball in his hand, the more they stretch it. Third and six, and a lot of Michigan folks down in that area of the stadium, and they're trying to help. Here they come. Oh, they're offside. Michigan's offside. Absolutely. They're, I think it was Steele on the right-hand side. It was almost even with a Washington State tackle. Using receiver, a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Number 16. Yeah, well, so Ryan, it'll be first now, Ryan does a nice side. job, Keith, of, of getting to the line of scrimmage and, and, and having enough cadence left that when he saw the blitz, he sees the blitz coming. He sees uh, 55 Jones and uh, and the safety Ray run up in there. Now he's got enough cadence left to pull Steele off, off sides. Now Glenn knew he was in no man's land, but he, he couldn't find a way to get back. Yeah. So he's trapped. So put the ball out at the 31-yard line, and it's now third and uh, about a half a yard. Here's where they need black. Gilmore, he got it. I tell you what, that linesman coming in from the far side didn't give him to him by very much. I don't know about this. Yeah, uh, yep, they mark it. Go ahead. First down. That's close. Well, this has already been a successful drive for the Cougars, Keith, because they got it out of the... Remember, the they took over on their one-yard line. Sure, the car wanted his defense to hold him, but this game is a field position game. Roll out. Bought time. Man down the sideline. This Chris Jackson for a first down at the Michigan 39-yard line. Dwayne Patman, a freshman, was over there, wrapped his arms around him and brought him down. He bought time with that. The defensive back at the bottom of the screen is going to slip and fall and not get back into coverage. Watch the right side. That's a good throw right there. He just gets back and gets over. If the man hadn't have fallen, though, that may have been trouble. Jackson with five catches, 89 yards. Now first down inside the Michigan 39. And we got a different man carrying it. It's Clayton. Yeah, Clayton, number 24. Yeah. Marcus Ray with the tackle. The offensive line doing a nice job of uh, blocking. You can be sure that uh, <laughs> that they don't want to sit back and pass protect all day. And when they get an opportunity to fire off and run block and hit the defensive guy before the defense hits them. They enjoy that. Jason Clayton picking up five yards on second down and five. Leaf back pedaling. Down the middle, he's wide open. That's McKenzie inside the 15. Put it down at the 13. problem is here's the slot receiver he's going to get open in the middle of the field the problem is there's no pass rush on Ryan they send four guys take it's picked up pretty nicely and he just gets open right in the center of the field is it the backpedaling that helps him see the field as he's going back I like with quarterbacks back pedal Keith especially when you you can see the whole field that way especially when somebody's coming from your blind side your left side right. he can see that guy coming Put it on the 14, make it a first down. Here they come with reversing the ball. It's Sean Timms into the corner. Touchdown! They 
started on the one yard line fumbled the football recovered it on the two and now they just stuck it in the end zone. Hold on to your cushion. Point try by Ryan Lindell. He's a sophomore out of Vancouver, Washington. And it's blocked. Oh, my goodness. James with the block the flash. It's a block extra point by James Hall, number 56. Those kind of things will haunt you. Oh, yes. Nothing's easy, Mike Price. We got a touchdown, then we can't get the conversion right up the center. <laughs> in the lead they scored the first of the first quarter Michigan scored in the second quarter and now the Cougars have taken the lead but they blew the point Clarence Williams is out there as one of the return men for Michigan and now kicks it off and he gets it over the goal line so it'll come out to the 20 and first down let's go back to the touchdown Keith it looked like Michigan was sitting back expecting pass here's Tim's out here he's just going to come around on a reverse remember we talked about these wide receivers Tim's was a running back in high school gets around there pretty good and, and makes the uh, score let's go back to the block extra point right up the center Hall just oh, oh, just went over just the top. jumped just jumped right yeah. over both of them wow. that that may be very big before this day's over. First down for the Wolverines at the 20 now. Ryan stands up and throws to the sidelines. Russell Shaw and Shaw from Los Angeles playing in Michigan is tackled at the 24-yard line. Steve Lewis flying around everywhere made that tackle. Look at this, Keith. This is a big drive right here. Coming out first drive of the third quarter. Backed up on your own one-yard line. You take it 99 yards. I have a lot of folks who can do 99 yards in less than four minutes. <laughs> That's the momentum, if there is any right now. It's yep. definitely uh, with Washington State after that drive. Second down. Call it five, five and a half. Hand the ball off to Chris Howard. And Howard is tackled at the, just around the 27. So it'll be third down at about three. Todd Nelson. The stop for Washington State. I get a three yards. Brings up third and two. One and 28. Mike Price was saying that they felt that they had uh, enough defensive uh, depth along the front to be able to substitute, but I don't think he's done all that much substituting so far today. It's been a very comfortable day. That's uh, Howard trying for the first down, and uh, Chris e. Strong gets it. Second effort got him over the 30, and they'll move the change. Exactly right, Keith. The second effort got that one. First down, Michigan. Michigan has been very good on third down conversions this year. Today, the first half, they were 0 of 5. And I think they're 2 of 8 right now. Put it on the 31 yard line for the first down. Greasy's pass away. It's going underneath the coverage. It wasn't strong and uh, Shaw picked up a couple. Shaw had 19 receptions for 235 yards and two touchdowns coming into the ball game. Ray Jackson with the stop for the Boogers. He was very quiet toward the tail end of the yards. season, but uh, all of a sudden, uh, Brian has found him today. Well, what's happening is it's it, the, the Cougar defense is, is, is forcing the uh, Brian and the uh, offense to go outside to the wide receivers, right. and they're covering the tight ends and stopping the run. Truman's been very quiet. There goes Chris Howard again. Right side. And he's going to need a two, two and a half, three yards for his first down. His third down is coming up. Brandon Moore there for the tackle. Here's Swanee. 
Well, Keith, coming into this ball game, everyone talked about how physical this Michigan football team is and how they played the whole year, that maybe Washington State couldn't stay with them. I'm extremely impressed by the way their defensive line and their offensive line has been playing for Washington State. They have been dedicated, they have been fierce, they have been physical throughout this ball game. They are not giving one inch to what we thought was superior physical play from the Michigan side of the ball, Keith. Well, well taken point. 39 yard line, third down and two. There they come. And there's your first down. Chris Howard getting those knees up and just pounding in the traffic. And three of those defensive linemen in there, Keith, Boos and Bender and Holmes, all around the 300 pound mark. You don't usually see defensive linemen that big. Usually defenses are smaller and quicker, but Howard doing a nice job of finding his way through all that poundage in there. Chris has uh, 60 yards and 11 carries so far in the ball game. Put the ball at the 42 yard line now. Casey rolls out, still got it, lets it go big for Ty Street. Touchdown. Street beats Boren Cola. Brian Greasy threw the ball probably just about as far as he can <laughs> throw it. <laughs> and it worked for six. You know, Bob, I, I got to tell you, throughout, throughout the season, I've always said Brian Greasy could not throw the ball that deep. That's oh, why they never went downfield. Look at that one. Don't yeah. start that with me now, You Lenny. proved me wrong. <laughs> the point for the lead. Good. The longest pass play of the year for the Michigan Wolverines. And it gives them a 14 to 13 lead at 5.07 to play in the third quarter. Look, I work hard to earn the money that's going to be invested. Somebody who knows a lot more than Mike Price standing over, shaking his head and saying, oh, then blocked extra points. And Michigan takes a 14 to 13 lead. Okay. Fifty-eight yard <laughs> touchdown reception. For Ty Streets, he has one for 53, so he's Having a pretty good day. That kickoff, I feel it goes beyond the field of play. Here's 20. Well, Keith, this was an outstanding throw and catch by Brian Greasy to Ty Street. As we take a look from overhead at our cable cam, it gives us a perfect view of Ty Street on the outside. What makes a play is that move right there. Instead of going underneath, he goes over the top, so he gets behind the, the defensive back, and he is in the end zone. I mean, you cannot draw it up any better. And Bob, my hat off to your son for throwing the deep ball in the big ball game. Well, they haven't thrown the deep pass a lot this year, Lenny. Uh, and I think that's what the Cougars are playing the short stuff. And I think some of the deep passes have been there today. So the Cougars go to work first down from their own 20. Jason Clayton stays in as Leaf drops. He's clobbered as he throws the ball and it is incomplete and almost intercepted by William Peterson. You know, momentum, Keith, is such a, 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 a funny thing. You know, when you've got it like Washington State did on that last drive and then Michigan didn't have it and then that one big play, these are just young college kids, amateurs, and they really get up and down. It looks right there like it looks like Ryan said, hey, you know, we need to make some plays well, here to get this back. Deontay Jones just whammed him yeah. on. I mean, he almost rung his bell. He had to shake off the webs. Maybe it was up. just in the days. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Second down and ten. He really hit it. Hand it off to Clayton. And Jason Clayton can't get away from it. And he's taken down for a two-yard loss by Marcus Ray. And momentum now is where it may be blue. Third and 
third down, Keith. Uh, the Cougars are tops in the Pac-10 and converting third downs. Michigan's the best in the Big Ten at stopping them. What do they got? Six DBs out there oh, now? Oh, yeah. Yep. So the dime package is in. Third and 12. Pressure coming, steps up, throws, got a man up there for a first down. It again is Kevin McKenzie, Kevin McKenzie. getting loose in the middle. It's one thing about these wideouts, they will go in the middle for you. Well, this is one of the times that Michigan did not go tight man to man coverage. McKenzie is over here in the slot. He's going to go down and straight and run a square in the middle of the field. The, the Wolverines, the backs, are just going to drop back and cover an area. You see a lot of guys open down there. Jim Herman would be better served if he just kept tight man coverage. The football is resting at the 38 yard line, where it's a first down for Washington State. Three wide outs at the top of the picture. He steps away from Ian Gold and moves up to the 46, 47 yard line where he runs into William Peterson. <laughs> William is six foot, 193, and Leap is 6'6, 238. Uh, yeah. And there was a pretty good well, thump. It, it, well, Ryan tries to run over him. He says, I, just because my uh, title is a quarterback, I'm a lot bigger than you are. Runs all the way out here, finds a small corner, and then just lowers his shoulder. And picked up eight yards. Second down and two. With Michael Black out of there, though. Bigger load on Leap. Gilmore is in at the single back position and gets the ball. And uh, is taken down for a yard loss. Runs into Charles Woodson. Charles Woodson. Loss of one yard. It'll be third and three. Woodson's an all-around player. He not, not only is a great cover guy, but he's very intelligent, quick. Here he comes on a blitz. And he's a tough physical guy. I mean, he's, he's got the whole package. Confidence. Timeout called by Washington State. I think Ryan Leaf may need to take a breath here. I try to quit smoking cold turkey. The Goodyear Blimp Eagle traveling over 100,000 miles every year covering major sporting events. Third down and three now for Washington State. Michigan up, showing blitz. Checking off. Checking off. He may be coming down right at the bottom of the screen. He sees single coverage. Nope. They go for the run, but the run won't get it. Juan Gilmore is not going to get the first down. <laughs> Jones and Steele and all those big dudes were in there and just slammed the door on him. Now decision for Mike Price, whether to go for it or punt it away. He punted. Fourth and one, he's, he's thinking about it. <laughs> but he's going to punt it. Jeff Banks. Shortest kick, 39. Longest kick, 46. And he's kicked it five times up to now. Got it out of there. We've got some heat on him, but it'll go out of bounds. There'll be no return. It's out at the Michigan 23 yard line. Glenn Steele was the man in his face. And he got it away. Saturday at 4 Eastern on ABC Sports. The biggest names in pro teams at 13 trying to win their first undisputed national championship in a half a century and pounding right in on the top of Brian Greasy was Leon Pender and slapping the ball away. They're trying to get a screen pass off and Bender, the over the left guard, just gets in there and just knocks it away. I mean, Michigan is a big screen team. Looks like that was set up pretty nicely for Howard. But Bender, uh, as we mentioned earlier, Keith hadn't called his name too much, been playing a good game, but uh, certainly must have heard us. So let's, get, let's get after a little bit. My time. Let's get going. <laughs> this is Chris Howard. And Chris ran right into one of those big linemen. It's uh, Shane Doyle. And went down in a thump. Here's one. 
Okay, we've seen a reversal of roles in this ball game. It's Washington State on the 99-yard drive and a touchdown, and it's Michigan with the big play. What Michigan needs to do now is go back to the old Michigan. Their defense has been on the field much too long. The offense needs to stay on the field, possess it, give this defense a chance to rest, or else they, not, they will not be strong in the fourth quarter, Keith. Yeah, they're trying to do that, Lenny, but... Uh... This Cougar defense won't let them. They're stopping anything short, forcing them to go long. Third and nine. That's completed to Russell Shaw. That's going to be his third catch here in the second half of play. D. Marcola on the coverage. They're looking at the marker. It's close. Better measure. You got 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play, and I'm, I'm frankly surprised that we are in a one-point ball game. I didn't think we'd have that. One way or the other, I didn't think we'd have that. <laughs> it's first down. <laughs> Now again, Michigan going outside to the wide receivers. This is where they're getting a lot of their business done today. Shaw just going down and stopping. Thought he got enough for the first down, and he did by a couple of inches. 33-yard line for the Wolverines on their side of the field. Brandon Moore, number 22, wouldn't let him get around the corner. He went down on the field of play, so the clock continues to run. It could be the last play of the third quarter. So we played three. Michigan 14, Washington State 13. Back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Football on ABC Sports. One quarter to go. One point lead for Michigan. Trying to win a national championship and beat Washington State. And the pass is low and dropped. It was Shaw who made the big catch to keep the possession alive. Now he has one getaway right on his number. So it'll be third down and five. Brian Greasy getting the call from the sidelines. Tuman, interestingly, has come off the field, the tight end, the sure-handed tight end. Anthony Thomas is off the field. Going four wide receivers. They put uh, Woodson in at the bottom of your picture. Shotgun. Blitz come. coming. Almost caught him. Passes away. The pass is completed. Passes to the high streets for a first down. <laughs> Both quarterbacks, Keith, doing a nice job of controlling the line of scrimmage with their cadence. Brian, that time, saw the blitz coming. Let him get up there, show the blitz so all the offensive linemen in the backs knew who to pick up and then picked it up. Watch it here. They get up there. Now Now he gives them a second. All right, settle your, settle your thoughts. Know who you're going to block. Now snap it. Ryan Leaf, you saw him do that a couple, a couple series ago. Ball is at the 47 for Michigan, and this is Chris Howard. And he'll get it just over midfield. We're in the fourth quarter. Michigan undefeated, ranked number one in the national polls, the number one defensive team in the country, a team that makes very few mistakes offensively. Washington State, the Gatling gun offense, defense suspect. Not today. It's just been a tough, hard-nosed, physical football game. And it's second down and seven for Michigan. Quickly out for Shaw. Get him out there one-on-one, -on -one, and the first man misses Ray Jackson missed it. And he's close to a first down. Mich Michigan has bought, watched the tapes and saw that in the Arizona and Arizona State game, they worked on the... The uh, cornerback over here, Ray Jackson, they worked on some. Gibbons was in there for a while. They continue to work on that side of the defense. 
They're going to bring the change in to check it. Kind of a contrast, not only in the way the two conferences play their game, but uh, Michigan came out, went down to Dana Point, which is pretty fancy, and <laughs> worked down there, but they worked hard at two days. And it's first down, Michigan. Washington State, on the other hand, went to Santa Monica. I don't remember anybody going to Santa Monica. And they rented uh, time in the Coliseum yeah. for their practice. And they stayed there. And they stayed there because they wanted their players to get used to playing in a big building, a big stadium. Yeah. And, he wanted, and Mike Price wanted good footing. And there good was footing. good footing there, too. One was open, closed. Uh, Lloyd closed his practices. Uh, Mike Price kept his open. Invited the whole town, especially mamas who had big sons. High, long, looping pass thrown to the sidelines, and this one is incomplete. It was intended for Charles Woodson. And so Woodson running down the sidelines and was pretty well covered by D. Moran Cole at that time. Ball was a little short. He had the lean come back. A little, little, little wide, bit. too. Yeah. Yeah. Little wide. He'd been downfield a little bit yep. more. He may have had a shot at it. Yep. But he throws it to the outside, which is good, but it's a little short. Hmm. Uh, Woodson's got too much speed. Oh, yeah. yeah it's interesting did. that Mike Price kept his uh, practices open. He invited uh, high school coaches, junior college coaches, uh, recruits, uh, high school, anybody. Second down and 10. Give the ball to Anthony Thomas with a big freshman breaks it. And that's supposed to be another first down. And this is beginning to look like another one of those typical Michigan drive. Now this is what Michigan has looked like most of the year. Get you in the fourth quarter, wear you down a little bit, Adamy the center, 68, 76 is Hutchinson, back is 79, Floyd number seven, one of the best blocking fullbacks around. It'll be third down and a half a yard. That'll be a first down. Greasy sneaking it. First four years at Michigan were not the delight of his life. But he had a long talk one time, one day with his brother, Jeff. And Jeff, probably as much as anybody, helped him make up his mind to go on back and play that fifth year. Lo and behold, look what happened. He yeah. wins an $18,000 scholarship, which his dad applauded loudly. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Academic scholarship for the National said. Foundation. Oh, okay. Up the middle. All running now by Chris Floyd, the big fullback, 230 pounds, and they're starting to pound on him. That's nice blocking up the center. Adamy and uh, Hutchinson right up the center of that line. Watch Adamy, the center block back. Hutchinson, 76, traps, comes over on the trap. Floyd's up there getting a good block. Grant's in there. Yeah, Dave Grant is in there right now. He's another red shirt freshman. So there are a lot of good young people playing a lot of football all over the country this year. 21-yard line of Washington State. Cougars now being pressed by the Michigan offense. Oh, that's a stop at the line of scrimmage. I mean, a whack by Brandon Moore. Well, Chris Floyd is a low. When you stop him behind the line of scrimmage, you, you've done a day's work. Um, Bill Dobo, the defensive coordinator, said, that's enough of this stuff. Here's my linebacker. Here he's going to blitz right into the hole where the play's coming. You move it down the field. A lot of defensive coordinators, especially when you get around the 20-yard line, or inside like the blitz to get you out of field goal range. Loss on the play. Uh, a couple of yards. Thomas is back in, the big back. Ryan play action throws. He's got two but open. Touchdown.
Gallagher for the point. Greasy hole. Michigan Wolverines now taking the lead in the fourth quarter with 11-21 to play. One of the staples of the Michigan offense is the fake counter, bootleg, hit your tight end, wide open in the end zone, and Tuman is the guy. And down there in Yolens. Be fun. 35-yard line. Michigan kicking off, leading 21 to 13. 11 21 to play in the ball game. It's a low driving kick that goes well back into the end zone, and no return by Nyan Taylor. And it'll be Washington State in the 20. Go back and take a look at the touchdown. It's going to be a fake over here. Brian's going to get outside the pocket. Tuman is right here and is going to sneak across on the play action fake to the right. He's going to find his way through the defenders and sneak over there deep behind the defensive backs. I don't know, Keith, if that was Thompson's responsibility or not. But, Free safety. Uh, he yeah. wasn't. Yeah, I would think so on that play. But I Brian, don't know that. Brian and Lode Carr made a living on that play all year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith, just a heads up. Michael Black, number five, just came back into the ball game. I see that. Sore leg and all. Well, if they need him now, I mean, it's crunch time. McKenzie's out there, too, and he's the man in motion, and they give it to Black. He runs it up to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all there is. Michigan defense is on fire. They're claiming possession of the ball. Joaquin Frizzell, number 90, he's out there, and he can claw and scratch and hang in there with most everybody. He found his way to Ann Arbor from Fort Valley, Georgia. And he's a senior. This offense of the Cougars, Keith, uh, you see Black uh, limping off. Can't do it. Is, is a veteran group. They have 11 seniors, either fourth or fifth year seniors. Some of the guys are coming back, but they all have been there for at least four years. Very veteran. The time now the runs out of time. Josh Williams gets his first sack of the day. And he takes Leaf down at the 10-yard line. This is what happened in the Ohio State game. Glenn Steele, Rob Renus, and Josh Williams took over the ball game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, well, he's looking downfield. His receivers on the left side, both of them were going deep. He was going for something big, and when you go for deep throws, it takes more time to get open. And uh, Josh Williams in the line for the Michigan Wolverines didn't allow it. So put the ball on the 12-yard line and make it third down and 18. If they have to punt from here, the Wolverines will get very good field position. He throws it, he completes it. Up across the 30-yard line to Kevin McKenzie, just a flick of the wrist and a bullet to McKenzie and a first down. Wow. Tucker Gray in the coverage. It's a big first down for uh, the Cougars. And Ryan's going to make this. He's, gonna, he's ready to throw right now, but... He doesn't know where everybody is, so he slides outside the pocket, remembers the routes, of course, and then the height and the release and the mobility. Just move around a little bit, buy some time in the pocket. That's what he didn't do the time before when he was sitting in there waiting for the deep routes. First down at the 31. 9 10 to play as the clock kicks down. Roll out, look out, passes away. It's Glenn Gilmore out of the backfield. All the way down to the 27-yard line of Michigan. Andre Weather saved the touchdown. They're exciting, aren't they? They really are. And we saw him working on this pass in practice the other day. He fakes it to Gilmore, the running back, and then he's going to throw it to Gilmore. He slides out of the backfield, and with the speed, we said earlier he was explosive. Big drive for the Cougars. Oh, boy, is it ever. 9-0-1 to play in the ball game. First down at the Michigan 27-yard line. Clayton is the single back. Lee pumps it, and he's sacked. Number 55, Deonte Jones, the sophomore from Potomac, Maryland. Now, anything that takes time, that was a little hitch and go or out and up. He faked it, and he just anything that takes time is just not going to get it. 
Dahani Jones is going to come from the inside. He fakes. It was a little hook and go at the top of the screen. And you just don't have that much time. Michigan blitzing almost on every play. When you put Jones and Gold together in that linebacking position, you've got some real speed for Michigan. Gold is very quick. Jones has nine tackles in the ball game and two sacks. Second down, underneath, and the pass is underthrown. He had it wide open. Love Jefferson, number 20, the tight end, was all alone. And he didn't get it to it. Third down and 17 coming up. To the running back, Black, and then the Jefferson, the tight end, uh, he caught 14 coming in, but that's only like an average of one a game. I'll bet you he's one tough dude, too. Well, he can block. Make it through life name Love. <laughs> He'd have to bust some nuggets. He, this is a four-down area, so if they don't get it on this one, they don't have to throw it for the whole yard. He just gets some of it and then get the rest of it on fourth down. Third and 17. Blitz is coming. He's coming. They're gaining on him, and they got him at the 30. It is James Whitley. Whitley blitzed on the last play. He's that freshman out of Norfolk, true freshman, and which means he's about 18, 19 years old, and he, he got him that time. So it's fourth down, and I would imagine Lindell is out, and he is. So they'll try for the field goal at 7.45 to play in the game. Take it from an eight-point game to a five-point game, unless they got a great uh, fake field goal player. Goal it's pretty long, 48 yards. He can handle it. Yes, he can. Is it in? Yes. 48-yard field goal by Ryan Lindell, and Mike Price gave him a big endorsement through the whole season, and he just delivered. It's 21-16 now team of the final USA Today ESPN Top 25 Coaches Poll. Michigan Wolverines can take it home with them if they can hang on. They lead by five now with seven minutes and 25 seconds to play. I would suggest to you this is a very important possession coming up. This won't be on. Seven plus. It's down to the one. Anthony Thomas. Oh, they turn him upside down at the 19 yard line. Here's a look at the two quarterbacks. Uh, Brian Leaf, 259 yards, 50% uh, touchdown interception. Brian Greasy, 231 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. And in the second half, uh, the offenses have possessed the ball six times, and they have scored on four of those occasions. So the offenses have stepped it up here in the second half. So they start, they put it at the 18-yard line and give it to Chris Howard. And he's put out just about the line of scrimmage, and the Cougar defense fully aware that uh, they need to pin Michigan now and make them punt the ball out to give the offense a chance. Today's Rose Bowl attendance, 101,000. 219. I mentioned earlier today that Washington State had over 300,000 requests. Various sources. And they got 35,000 tickets. And they got 35,000 tickets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you passed those tickets out. 157,000 recorded requests. They know of. And the pressure. And the pass is away. And it's up the grab. And Ryan Greasy took a pretty good lick. As he released the ball, but he's up and about. Bender, I think, Leon Bender came thumping through there. Remember now, Bender weighs 300 pounds. That'll squeeze the air out in a hurry. Yes, Juanny? Well, Keith, I'm, this is usually the, the time in the ball game that Michigan does one of two things, or, or two things, actually. One is when their offensive line has usually taken charge and started to dominate teams in the fourth quarter. The other thing Michigan normally does in this season is they get a little more conservative in the offense, which I think has allowed teams to stay close. Certainly that last play was not conservative. Nope. They're going to need some big plays because Washington, is, Washington State was lightning in the bottle, Keith. It's third and 11. No pressure. 
No, they grab him by the helmet. Now Bender takes off after him. He's going for the first down, and he's got it. Oh, he's very close to it. They don't give him the whole stretch. They mark him, and they may have marked him. I'm not going to guess, but that's close. And uh, Cougar pressure had him with a shoulder pad, and he shook him off. Well, he was trying to throw the ball downfield again, and the coverage was there. And he got away from one man. I don't think he's going to make it here, Keith. No, no. So much for you. <laughs> bad angle. I got a bad angle up here. <laughs> That's a big, big first down come on, right here. Come on, tell him that you doubted him on his <laughs> long run of the day. He wanted to throw it deep. He, he got away from Booth. Uh, Dorian Booth was the man that went for him, and then. Uh, Oren Kohler took him down, but he couldn't keep him away from the first down and move the ball out to the 27-yard line. Here they come. Hand it to Chris Howard. Howard trying to get outside and Bender. As he goes by and trips him. It's more like the 28, 29, in between the 28 and 29 at the 27. Keith, when you have a strong defense, the best defense in the nation, as Michigan does, you're offensively, you play it a little bit more conservatively. You say, don't help them out. Don't help Leaf out by, by giving him good field position. Make him go the whole length of the field against our defense. The worst thing the offense wants to do is turn it over, and the, the last thing you want to do is punt it away and force him to go the whole length of the field. Second and a little more than 10. This is Anthony Thomas. And he's across the 30 at about the 31 or 2. Well, Lloyd had said he had hoped that he could put Washington State on their one yard line about five times of the game. He did it once, and they went 99 yeah. yards for a touchdown. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a Cougar down. That's number 24, 34, 34 Gleason. Yeah. 34, Gleason. Oh, my goodness. He's been busy today. Sophomore out of Spokane. Led the team with 91 tackles this season. So we've got timeout for an injured Steve Gleason with 5.02 to play in the game. Every year I try. Creation of Michigan. Greasy stands up, throws, sets up screen. Woodson has the ball. Woodson is looking for room. Woodson has the first down. My goodness, he gets the first down at the 40-yard line before they could knock him out. He was actually looking to throw I that ball he was, first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like it. <laughs> throw this ball out to him. It's a lateral. Now he was looking to throw the ball downfield. Do you see Jackson, number two, pointing there. Jackson knocked him out. So it's a first down, a big one for Michigan at the 40-yard line. Greasy rolls out. He looks downfield and elects to run it. And takes the leg. Can't go down there and start button heads with linebackers and uh, live to talk about it. <laughs> Todd Nelson hit him. I told him he should start sliding, see, yeah, but he still wants right. to go ahead first. He's a little hard-headed. Gleason is all right. Is he back? He's good. He trotted off the field after pounding on the ground until the pain passed. Probably a stinger. Now he's back in the ball game. So the tension builds at 419 to play in the ball game. Michigan undefeated, ranked number one, trying to win their first undisputed national championship in a half a century. Washington State's never been ranked seventh in the nation. They've never had an opportunity to do what they have in front of them today. They're trailing by five points. The pressure coming from number 22. That would be Brendan Moore. And the pass intended for Chris Floyd is incomplete. Washington State do it defensively doing a nice job of knowing the tendencies of the Wolverines. They're a big screen team. That screen was covered pretty well. Bill Doba, the defensive coordinator. Brandon Moore, 22. Ryan just gets rid of the ball. Michigan is... Excuse me, Keith, I just could say Michigan was 0 of 5 on third down conversions in the first half. Second half, they're 8 of 9. Woodson's back on the field. 
Third down and six. Woodson at the bottom of the picture. Greasy looks left, throws that ball. Goes to Shaw. Shaw has a first down. Russell Shaw worked his way free and makes the catch at the Washington State 43. I am now becoming very precious. This is one of the things that Brian uh, Greasy has done well, Keith, all season long, is, is picking up third downs and making first downs out of them. Against Wisconsin, when Wisconsin came back and made the game a little close, Michigan kept the ball, converting third down plays, as Brian's doing right here. Possessed the ball. Ryan Leaf can't hurt you sitting on the bench. Shaw's caught six balls for 49 yards, five in the second half. Handed away to Clarence Williams, fresh legs in the game. Coming up next, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, Florida State and Ohio State. The Buckeyes lose two games, and they may be the second or third best team in the country, in my view. Florida State only lost one time. I think it's a tremendous matchup. Coming up in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. I may go sit down and watch that. As soon as somebody feeds me. <laughs> 41 yard line. Second down and eight. Stay with the run. And it goes to Anthony Thomas. And Thomas is taken down just about the line of scrimmage. Maybe a half a yard. Salafsa brought him down. Big fella from Teo Salafsa from Long Beach. That's Ryan Leaf waiting, hoping he'll get another opportunity. Give you an idea of the contrast of life in college football. Washington State has had eight winning seasons in 20 years. Michigan has 19 winning seasons in the last 20 years. And the other one they wasn't didn't have a winning season, they were six and six. The last time Michigan had a losing season was 1967. Please comes in for the pressure. Please cannot get to him in time. The ball is delivered. To to Woodson for the first down and there's a penalty flag all the way across the field. Well, they're talking about this. Dick Burleson's going to call offside against Washington State. Bud Williams, the umpire. James Wilson, the headlinesman. Bob Patrick, the line judge. Bill Bowden, the field judge. Eddie Powers, the side judge. Stan Murray, the back judge. They're all from the Southeastern Conference. And I think they've done a pretty good job today. They're going to take a measurement here, Keith, to make, see if it's a first down. Dick Carlson says he's going to hang up his whistle yeah. after this one. He's been a good one, hasn't yes, he? Yes, he has. Good guy. They completed the pass to Woodson. It looks like it's close to being a first down. They want to measure it before they've got a five-yard penalty that they can take if it's not a first down. It is a first down. Well, Michigan has been making those by two and three inches every time, haven't they? Yep. Woodson's a second in from the bottom. There's the offsides. That spells W. Just picking up the first downs. When you got a lead, keep the ball. 2.05 to play in the game. 21-16 Michigan. Washington State has what? Two timeouts left? Yep. My only feeling about this is Michigan is looking for something real big. I think Washington State has already won by getting here. Oh, I think I think they both have won. Keith. I do too. Uh, I think they're both winners in this instance. Uh, From the 33 down inside the 31. Washington State takes their their time out here. Here's a look at the, the line blocking. This is tough now for the offensive line when you when when everybody knows you're going to run and they know you got to run the ball. That's tough yardage. Second and eight. set his back is a man who had 10 Rose Bowl teams Bo Schimbeckler started in 1970 now he's watching one of his assistants longtime friend Lloyd Carr try to win in his first trip to the Rose Bowl 
If he does and he goes on to claim a national championship, it fully authenticates Lloyd Carr's presence as the football coach of the Michigan Wolverines. And he'll deserve it. Chris Howard is tackled around the legs and will pick up a couple of yards on that carry. And the clock is stopped now for the moment. And all. Washington State spins a, a timeout. That's their last timeout. That's their last timeout. And the time remaining on the game clock is now 1.26. Third down and seven, Washington State has spent its last timeout. 21-16 lead for Michigan, but the, you know that Michigan's going to run the football twice here to get keep the clock running. Well, you got to run it this time to keep the clock running. That's what you want. You want time off the clock if you're a Wolverine. You, then it becomes a question of field goal. Do you run two running plays, or you try to add three points onto your total? And the flash holds are popping all over the place as Chris Howard bounces to the outside and can't get away with it. <laughs> he stopped at the line of scrimmage. And it is now fourth down. And this would be a man-sized field goal try. And I doubt that they'll do it. So you know, you know the play. Oh, it's thinking about it. There's a fourth down. Something no, he's thinking about it. He doesn't, he wants, what he's do you thinking do? thinking about running the ball. Do you run he's the ball thinking. again? Do you kick a field goal? Which would be too far. It'd be uh, 47 yards. You're not going to do that. Do you punt it? If you punt it, you might gain 20, 25 yards. In the meantime, the clock is running because yeah. the Cougars can't stop it. He's going to let the clock run all the way down. Call timeout. There's your call on timeout. Wolverines have two more after this, so he calls timeout with 39 seconds remaining. For your convenience, the Rose Bowl, complimentary shuttle buses to Old Pasadena will continue on demand as needed for at least two hours. So, the end of this game. A hard, tough football game that was fought valiantly from tackle to tackle and every division with 39 seconds to go. And Michigan has every indication they can run it out and claim an undefeated season. Washington State, on the other hand, can say, hey, look what we did. Not bad. Leaf, we think Ryan Leaf will be playing on Sunday next year. We haven't had anybody tell us that, but it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, thinking to figure out that yeah. that's where he's going. They're good friends, these two. Mike uh, Price uh, calls it a partnership. And uh, and why not? Mike Price has done a great job with the program and with quarterbacks. Uh, Drew Bledsoe before Ryan Lee. From... There we go. They're going to go for the field goal. Jay Feely, the man who does the kicking off, has a big leg. He may punt this ball. He might do anything. He is going to punt it. And he's rolling around at the five, rolling toward the sideline. They don't want it to go out of bounds. And it does. And Washington State now will have 29 seconds remaining. And will get the football first down at their seven-yard line. What? They have no timeouts left, but remember in college football, every time you make a first down, the clock stops to move the chain. So you do have some some kind of built-in help when you're in a two-minute offense in college. Well, you got Josh Williams, Fizel, Steele, Hall, Jones, and the rest of them are DBs. So. All of there's three big fellas and uh, eight runners. As Leaf stands to the goal line, looking around and throws to the sideline. It may have been nope. incomplete. Incomplete for the receiver and uh, not intercepted by Woodson. I don't think I'd be throwing the ball toward uh, Charles Woodson when I had only two snaps. Keep the key here is is pressure on the quarterback. I mean, if you don't pressure the quarterback and give him all kinds of time. These receivers are good enough to get down the secondary and run crossing routes and, and gain some big yardage. Second down and 10 with 21 seconds. He's going under center. 
for a quick slam. Yeah. Tried to get the ball to Nyan Taylor, who's one of the maybe the fastest, certainly one of the fastest, and he could not get to it. So there's 16 seconds remaining, equal to Ryan Leaf's number. Lloyd Carr has been to the well too many times. You ain't gonna fool him. The game ain't over till it's over. Now, yeah, well, right now, it's about time to spread your four receivers and hit, send your, your receivers straight yep. up the field and hit them on a seam route. Yep. Somebody will have to break a tackle to get a big play out. They got three of them over there at the top of the picture. That's where he's looking, and there it goes. And it is. No. Intercepted? Yes. Woodson intercepted. Did Taylor catch it? No, he caught it. Did he really? I pushed, he pushed the man away from yeah, him. I but thought he there it. was interference, and uh, they, they ruled it a catch. Nyan Taylor makes the catch. Pushed the man out of the way to get there, but. Well, they got half the football field on this one throw. Watch this. Watch the watch Taylor right here. That's interference. Just shoves a man out of the way. And it's ruled a catch. And McKenzie had is his the man flag hurt. out. Official pulled his flag out but yeah. didn't throw it. I saw him reach in his pocket. That's why I thought there was going to be interference go. But he put it back. Yeah. And I think it's McKenzie who's shaking up and down over there on the side. Either I don't know who it is. But it's a cougar and there's timeout for it. Could be uh, if it's number two, it'd be Jackson. Twenty. Well, Keith, right now with the receiver down, it certainly gives Washington State an opportunity to get a little bit of a rest and a breather for trying to make this last strike in the end zone. Hey. But Ryan Leaf is a quarterback you'd like to have. When you're down by five points, Keith, he's got the ability to get the ball on the line from where he is now into the end zone to a receiver. And all it takes is one play, just like the last one. That was Nyan Taylor that was hurt on the play, the man who made the catch. Well, you got to do the same thing. You got to throw it in. You may get two chances if you throw it quickly. Nine seconds. Penalty flag across the way. They get Leaf. It's steal, but there's a flag. The game may rest right here on this call. We had a dead ball foul before the ball was snapped. It would be a five-yard penalty. Replay the down. We need eight seconds on the clock. <laughs> He said eight. I think there were nine, and all of the Cougar fans are saying, hey, we want one more second. There were nine seconds up there. Yeah, nine seconds. Oh, no, definitely. So the penalty is against Washington State. Somebody moved. Fatigue, very much a part of this whole thing now. Should be nine. Back judge keeps time too. Well, for all you Michigan fans, go back to the the Hail Mary that beat you a couple of years ago against Colorado. Oh yes. They've lived through moments like this before. That, and they're that, gonna look at another one. That wasn't for a national championship. No. Nope. And nine seconds back on the clock now. That's that's correct. But in the process, Washington State lost five yards. They moved it before the snap. Pass. Lateral. Down to this 26-yard line. White and Love Jefferson. And there's two seconds remaining. The clock stops to move the chain. You better be ready to go when the chains are put down. Looking lateral. You got one play left. He's under center. Spikes it. Clock shows time has run out.
What, what does the referee say? I'm waiting. I think it's over, Keith. The referee's leaving the field. Yep, the officials are all leaving. Man in the white hat is headed to the tunnel. The football game is over. Michigan wins 21 to 16. An opportunity to claim their first undisputed national championship in a half century. And what a year for both these teams. And these are two teams that's Glenn Steele on the right and the blue and Ryan Lee hugging each other because they both know they both spent everything they had today. And it's a great college football game to watch. The trophy presentation is coming up. The MVP in today's ball game. Ah, uh, you want to know who it is? I'm standing alongside his proud daddy. Quarterback Brian Greasy of Michigan. What a year he's had. Changed his whole life. You got lost, me. <laughs> I don't blame you. You want to cry, you go ahead. I'll hold you up. That's shake, Greasy. You guys got me crying. <laughs> There's a lot here. A lot of good stuff right there. Earned everything he got, too. So did he, the man in the white shirt. The man who asked him to come on back and help us one more year. And that's the man right there, Woodson, and Steele, and William, and Renus. And Lloyd Carr is now fully acclaimed as a football coach. Here's Vince uh, one. Thank you very much, Keith. We're on the field with the president, Gary Dorn, of the Tournament of Roses Parade. He is going to make the trophy presentation. Coach, on behalf of the Tournament of Roses Association, we want to award you the championship trophy, which is right here. Are we going to pick it up? Yeah. Hey! 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 50 years ago, the University of Michigan won the national championship in this stadium, and this is a dream. It's been a wonderful season. I want to thank our players, and our coaches, the great Michigan fans. We're just happy to have been a great Washington State team. Uh, it went right down to the wire just like we thought it would. But. Uh, we got something to celebrate now. You've got a lot to celebrate. We're going to make another presentation. The man behind you, your quarterback, number 14, Brian Greasy. Brian, step forward. Congratulations to you, MVP of the Rose Bowl game. Did his old man ever win this trophy? <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> no, but you can't do extra points to win a game here. Well, I like father, like yeah. son. Uh, Brian, congratulations. Uh, it's an unbelievable feeling. I'm happy for this team, for these fans, for our university. It's an unbelievable feeling. Brian, this is a long journey for you. You were a walk-on at the University of Michigan. You had a decision to make. You came back for a fifth year. Need I say it's worth it? 
I couldn't have dreamed any, any better ending to my career here. I just feel so humble to be up here with all my, my players and for the fans. I'm just glad I came back and I could contribute. In the course of this ball game, it seemed like they were challenging you to throw the ball deep against their defense. Your receivers came through for you, an outstanding performance. They did. Every guy on that offense was called out. And our defense was playing a great game, and when it was up to us to win the game, our offensive line, Ty Streets, Russell Shaw, those guys did an unbelievable job. Now, I'm going to ask Charles Woodson to come forward here. He's standing here in the background. Not yet. Not yet. You'll hear it soon enough. A remarkable performance. One of the things that, that marks this season is that you played your best in the big ball games. You gave another great performance. Well, I take pride in that. Uh, trying to come out. This last game of the season, we had a chance for it all. And it just wasn't me out there today. It was a whole bunch of guys, a whole Michigan Wolverine team, and all the fans that made it down here to Pasadena. We did it, baby. We did it. All right, we did before it. we go, Charles, I got to ask you, I'd be remiss if I didn't. There are nine players or ten players on the Michigan defense who have eligibility to come back and play. Charles Woodson is one of them. You may not have made your decision, but I'm going to ask you now, will you be back? Or was this your last game for the maize and blue? Right now, I'm not going to reveal that to you right now, Mr. Swine, but I will let you know in the next week. In the next week? In the next week. Congratulations. Let's go back upstairs to Keith Jackson. Thanks a lot. Bob Greasy, your final thoughts. Well, I just, um, I, 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 Michigan has had a great year, Keith. Uh, it's been a magical year for Michigan and for Brian. Washington State. Again? They've had a great year. It was an under uh, 67 years. That's the last time they were in the Rose Bowl. You know, it, it's, speaking of Brian, it's I am very proud of him. He, it's been outstanding, and I just um, I'm just very happy for him. It's the first time in Michigan's history they finished 12 and 0. And I want to take one moment to read you something from a letter from an old friend of mine. It says, "The blue in our victory ribbons may fade. Trophies may become tarnished." The gleam of our metals lose luster, but the emotional experiences of joy and elation, heartaches and disappointments can never be shared by others. That was written by Fritz Chrysler, coach of the Mad Magicians that won that national championship at Michigan a half century ago. And now Lloyd Carr has done it. Your final score, Michigan 21, Washington State 16. Coming up next, another great football game in the Nokia Sugar Bowl between Florida State and Ohio State. We hope you enjoyed the 84th playing of the Rose Bowl. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, good night. Your attention, please. Hey, everybody, time for sports trivia. Who coached in the most NFL playoff games? We'll tell you who it is right after sports. Dwayne Walker, CNN Headline Sports. For the third time in the 1990s, Tom Osborne's Nebraska Cornhuskers have at least a share of the national championship. Their 42-17 trouncing of Tennessee at Friday night's Orange Bowl was enough to split the pole vaults for number one with Michigan. The Wolverines finished first atop the AP poll, while the Cornhuskers earned top spot on the coaches' poll. The beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and I'm sure that people voted as they did for different reasons. And you know, my, my feeling is that uh, how you vote should be determined by uh, what team do you feel would be favored over every other team at the end of the year, you know, regardless of, of uh, when they last won the national championship or which coach is retiring and all the, all the sidebars, you know. Let's shift to the NFL with the playoffs reboot today. Pittsburgh and New England are tangling in the AFC East, while later on the San Francisco 49ers will host Minnesota at 4 p.m. Eastern. And for first-year coach Steve Mariucci, he has a formula for going all the way. You've heard the cliche, defenses wins championships. And, and, um, and if that's true, 
then I like our chances because our defense has been excellent. Um, we're going to have to score some points, you know, uh, without a couple of our weapons in Garrison and Jerry. Um, and whether that puts more pressure or more responsibility on a Steve Young or, or whatever, uh, so be it. But we, we want to remain balanced. We want to use all of our weapons on offense. We don't have a guy that we feed the ball to or a go-to guy. We spread it around and everybody contributes. So that's how we're going to have to score points. Last night in the NBA, Shaquille O'Neal made a successful return to the Lakers lineup in a 116-106 triumph over Atlanta. Shaq Daddy contributed 22 points and 9 boards in his first appearance as recovering from a stomach strain. Derek Coleman's return to the 76ers lineup after a two-game suspension for fighting couldn't stop Seattle from winning their 11th straight in head-to-head -head matchups against Philadelphia. Folks, be sure to check the ticker for all the weekend scores. Dwayne Walker, CNN. Headline Sports. 1990s, Tom Osborne's Nebraska Cornhuskers have at least a share of the national championship. Their 42-17 trouncing of Tennessee at Friday night's Orange Bowl was enough to split the pole bolts for number one with Michigan. The Wolverines finished first atop the AP poll, while the Cornhuskers earned top... This afternoon, we are proud to have Detroit's Associated Press Bureau Chief Charles Hill on hand to make the following presentation to University of Michigan co-captain John Jansen. First, I'd like to offer my congratulations on a terrific football season, a national championship season, and on behalf of the Associated Press and the voters, the sports writers and sports broadcasters who voted in the poll, I'd like to present to you with this, the national championship trophy from the Associated Press. is the feeling holding a national championship trophy first time for the University of Michigan in 49 years well I'll tell you what for this team it's just a great experience you know we've had a lot of guys work real hard and the, the players the coaches and we had a lot of people stick with us through the rough years and now that we're uh, uh, we're on top right now it's just a great feeling you, know, you take a look at uh, what this team has accomplished this year 12 and 0 talk about what the team looked at at the beginning of the season and how did you accomplish this well, you know, day in and day out, we, we, when we went into each practice, we said, you know, this is the most important practice of the year. This is the most important game of the year. And we took every game, one game at a time. And I think that's really what made this tif team different than, every, than the other teams that we've had in the past. You talk about climbing a mountain. Lloyd Carr talked about climbing a mountain. And every week, that's what you guys did. You try to go one step further. Now, Lloyd Carr is still trying to climb that mountain. He's still on the West Coast recruiting before he goes to the convention trying to build a team for 1998 and then beyond. When you take a look at the team and you take a look at that type of tradition, what does that make you feel like that you're part of a Michigan tradition that goes back well over 100 years with the most Big Ten championships in the history of all Big Ten schools? Well, it's great to be a part of the tradition. And when we were out there, we got a chance to meet the uh, 47 team. Uh, we had a banquet, and it was great to uh, see everybody there uh, to celebrate with those guys for their 50-year anniversary and, and to, to accomplish this. Uh, our team, we're just happy to be a part of that great tradition. Well, I'd like to thank you, John, for being with us. I want to bring Mike DeBoard in, our offensive coordinator. Mike. Everybody talked about the defense all year, and again, they were fantastic. But it was uh, Brian Greasy and uh, Ty Streets that uh, came through with the uh, Great performance uh, in the Rose Bowl. Tell us, uh, did you know Greasy was going to have that type of day? I don't think there was any doubt. But uh, I, first of all, I think that uh, the defense deserved the recognition that they got the entire year. That's what we were built on. And uh, I was very proud of the way our offense went in and controlled the ball in the second half so Mr. Leaf could watch us. Well, I tell you, and that's exactly what he did. Mike, that was a great job out there. 
When you take a look at Ty Streets, can you tell us a little bit about what happened and how hard was it for him to come out and make those catches during that game? Because his fingers, I mean, he's not going to be on the basketball court this year. He's got to get ready for next year. Well, what they tried to do was take away our intermediate passing game. And uh, our coaches, our offensive coaches, were great throughout the game. And they kept telling me, you know, we got to keep going deep. we got to get the ball down the field. And uh, when we did that, our offensive line gave us great protection. Brian did an outstanding job of putting the ball in the money. And, of course, Ty made the catches. Great game. Great game and a great game plan. Even Lee Corso said you did a good job. How about that? championship and a big halftime lead. You're watching Big Ten Basketball. What makes it? The Wolverines have had a national championship in football. Speaking of the Big Ten Basketball, the uh, Big Ten Basketball schedule is underway. Let's talk, uh, Tim, about some of these early games. Michigan State wins on the road at Purdue. That was a real shocker. Illinois played very well in their loss to UCLA. Yeah, the Michigan State game stands out because of their outstanding guard play. Ohio State losing to BYU. There's the Michigan-Wisconsin game, and I think that's going to really jumpstart the Wolverines to great things. Also, Iowa beating Indiana badly. That game was in Bloomington. Uh, once again, the road teams doing damage. Purdue beats Minnesota. Here are games today. Wisconsin came from behind to beat Ohio State.